Hey, and welcome back. This is an update to the automation I created last week for the closed line method. And since then, uh, it, this problem has been on my mind. And frankly, I wasn't 100% satisfied with the end result. It still had a bit of manual elements to it. So I went ahead and implemented a couple of new features to Xcollet Draw Automate. And I'd like to show you uh, how um, how the end result looks like. Uh, before we dive in, I just want to show you for those of you who didn't watch the last part, just a few words about the closed line method. So the closed line method, as you can see, is based on the idea uh, of a closed line and it's taken from uh, Stephen Pressfield and he uses this concept in the crafting or for the crafting of stories. And he says that if you imagine a clothesline and you hang the beginning and the end of your story on it, and then you hang the uh, stages in between the beginning and the end, and then you start to hang the additional details uh, under each of the stage, this is a nice visual way of um, brainstorming about the end-to-end -end journey. And... The same approach can be used for project planning, for curriculum design, for presentations. It's just a nice approach. And then to show you the original workflow before I did anything was a copy-paste approach. So I copied this card and then I uh, pasted the card. I placed it wherever I uh, wanted to place it and then uh, I uh, edited the text and I changed the graphics and this is how uh, my cards worked. Uh, in the new approach, uh, what I'm doing is, and let me open this on the side, um, I have a script and so my script does the following. If I uh, select a, a header line in my card details file and uh, if I uh, point my pointer somewhere in my uh, drawing and I hit my hotkey then uh, the card is placed right there and this card is uh, fully functional so it already includes the link to the card details and it's uh, already an object I can move it around and place it wherever I want. If I want to hang something on, under this card, I can also select the card itself and then hit my hotkey and then my script is going to actually uh, position the new card right under the previous card, making the process even more streamlined. So that is the end result where we want to go to. And that is actually the concept uh, of the automation here. So now you've already seen the card details uh, file here, but just to explain the idea about uh, showing or displaying the card details, uh, the idea is I have links here and these links uh, point to a card details file uh, to the relevant heading section. And with that, I can actually do stuff like you can see right here. If I come here and click task two to be completed, then indeed in the card details file, task two is completed. And the way these links look, if I close this, I can just double click here and open this up so you can see that maybe I'll zoom in and do it that way that it's more visible. You can see that here I have a wiki link that is pointing to this a header section and then I have an alias uh, this character right there and that's why only this is displayed. If I would switch to raw mode then all of these links would be displayed. It doesn't look uh, quite that nice so in preview mode uh, you can see the aliases and you have the option to control hover and see the card details. As just one more detail to this, if I switch to the markdown view, I can see that I've added this additional switch to my front matter. Xcolidraw link prefix is an empty string. 
and with that switch uh, I can hide the additional character that I can configure. So if I come here to Excoli draw, you see that I have my link prefix character, which is a pin, but with that switch, I can hide that. And so the version one approach was based on the idea that if I copy uh, an object in Excoli draw, then Excoli draw places a JSON string on the uh, clipboard and this JSON string uh, can be modified by hand. So this is the JSON string. And if I replace the text, which I did here with say blah, 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 or whatever else, I copy this JSON string again onto the clipboard and place it to X call it raw, then I can see that uh, the object appears. And in version one, I was actually using this string and this copy paste approach to create the automation but it was not really comfortable because you had to switch between raw and preview mode to process the links so what i've done is i've added a couple of new features to xcollid raw automate and so first of all um, here are the new functions that i've added and so there are two utility functions, get elements and get element. It's not so important right now, but the part about the view uh, is quite important. So I'm able to now set which view, if I have multiple views, I can select which open active uh, pane in Obsidian or which open active Excoli draw document I want to manipulate. So I need to set my target view and then I can get the uh, selected element. So that's what I did in the second uh, demonstration when I went ahead. And so this one, when I select uh, uh, a, an element like this, and then if I press my hotkey, then the next item is uh, placed under that card. I'm using this uh, get view selected element function. Uh, I also have a function to help connect objects. Uh, I'm not demonstrating it right now, but this is good for building mind maps or process flows. And I created this function to add elements to a view, which uh, is the one that uh, makes it much more slick. So in the end, the Xcoli draw workflow looks like this. You first need to initialize your Xcoli draw automate object. Then you need to add various uh, items to your object's buffer. Uh, you need to initialize the target view. You have three options. You can either uh, specify which view you want to add. Uh, you can say first in that case Xcoli draw will check all the open Xcoli draw views and the first one it finds it is going to set as the target view of course if you only have one uh, open then the first one is going to be that one and the active uh, only works if the view is active right now templator doesn't support this but hopefully uh, it will and then the active command will open up the door to create all sorts of Xcoli draw macros uh, to help uh, streamline your drawing process. And then finally, once you initialize your target view, you can go ahead and manipulate that view. You can add elements to the view. You can get the selected element. You can connect objects. And so that is at the heart uh, of this process. So now let's look at the source code itself. This is now going to be a different approach. So I'm not editing the JSON, but what I'm going to be doing here is, let's just open the templator script. I'm actually going to close Xcoli draw and maybe just zoom in a little so you can see it better. So what I do here is, uh, you can see there's no JSON in this script. Uh, and, and it's a very simple script. It's somewhat long, but it's, it's just because there are details to set up as you add elements. The script itself is extremely simple. 
So you start off with initializing uh, Xcoli Draw Automate and then setting some of the basic styles uh, that uh, I want to use during my drawing. And then I also initialize my target view and I use set view first because I only have one drawing open and my card details file when I'm using this uh, script. So the first is going to be the drawing itself. And then I uh, calculate the offset so the point is so he, you can see I have the towel width and height and I check if there's a selected element so if there is a selected element then I modify the offset if there isn't a selected element then my offset for the new drawing is going to be the zero zero uh, coordinates and then with this before I start to create my drawing I use some of the templater features to identify the file name and also to find the active line in my document and get the text of that line. I match this regular expression uh, to only capture the heading text and not the hash marks a bit before the line and I call the wrap text. So I wrap this to the size of the box, which uh, I experimented and uh, 15 characters long is the right size. And then with that, I go ahead and start to draw my drawing. And this is really uh, straightforward. I'm not going to talk very much detail here, but you can see that um, I always store the ID of the object I created and that is because here in the end I'm going to be adding all of these objects to a group and that is to ensure that when I click on the object everything moves together. And so what I do is I create a rectangle that's my towel, then I choose a random color from this list of colors and that is going to be the color of my clip and I position the clip to the top center of my towel and I add this line to the clip which is the line for the spring and then I go ahead and create the text element I add the wrapped text and I reposition the text uh, so that is in the center of my towel so I take the width of the text and the width of the towel and based on that I modify the x coordinate of this element and then I place the details link to the bottom right what I do here is I set the width to 10 and that's because I'm actually uh, placing a long string into this uh, details text and that would be a very long uh, text and that's wide and it would mess up the positioning well you can actually play with this script and see what happens if you comment this line out um, so for that reason I uh, specify this width for the details link and then finally I create the group and I add all of these to my Xcoli draw object and the end result uh, is this clothesline where uh, if I hover the here I can open I can see the details file and if I stand on a line and I position my cursor I can actually uh, add uh, the card uh, to my clothesline so I think this is actually now a very nice and smooth uh, workflow and also I believe that these new features in Xcoli Draw open up lots of new opportunities for automation and hopefully in the not so distant future for uh, creating clever macros to streamline your uh, drawing process. Thank you.